Thank you. Merry Christmas. All right, I, I met somebody from Tennessee, all the way from Tennessee, who has traveled beyond the state of California to be here. <laughs> Greenland, right? Yeah, Greenland. Who else uh, has come from out of state? Simon. Um, North Carolina. Come on, Simon, you live here. I know better. <laughs> Your grandma. Okay, good. Very good. Very, very good. Well, Merry Christmas. It is, it is so great to have you guys tonight. This is our first Christmas celebration inside the new worship center, and we're so stoked to be here. It's yeah. just really a lot of fun. And uh, so, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As is our tradition. I don't know when this started, but a number of years ago, we started reading a children's book, a story book, uh, to kind of kick off the Christmas Eve celebration. And so, as is our tradition, we're going to do that. And then we'll be in Luke chapter 2, verses about 1 through 20, and we'll teach through that as well. And then we're going to light our candles. Now, this year, I think we started this a few years ago, we used to actually light candles. Remember that? It was so dangerous. Like if you had somebody in front of you who had lots of hairspray on their hair, you risked like lighting the whole place on fire. So we've wised up a little bit, not a whole lot, but just a little bit. And we have candles. So we have battery operated candles. So if you need a candle, go ahead and raise your hand and we'll get those to you. Do we have people ready to pass out candles or have they already been passed out? looks like everybody's got candles. So we're good. So we'll get to that here in just a moment. So let's take a moment and read our story. It is called, O oh, Holy Night. A silent night, a holy night. Caesar gave a decree that all should register and pay a tax in their city. A hurried night, a holy night, a couple on their way with many other travelers to Bethlehem to pay. A crowded night, a holy night. Demands for inns were huge. No room for Mary and Joseph. A stable, their refuge. A promised night. A holy night. The tiny Savior came. In a lowly manger bed, born man and God the same. Lullaby night, a holy night. Mary sang to her son. Sweet and loving, her gentle voice. A song of love had spun. A neighing night, a holy night, animals in their stalls, snorting, mooing, and chucking too, were noises from them all. A noisy night, a holy night, buzz and squeals and moos. The turtle doves did serenade the baby with their coos. <laughs> a silent night, a holy night. Shepherds abide outside, watching their flocks by campfire light, their sheep for them to guide. A frightful night, a holy night, shepherds were filled with fear. Angels from heaven came to earth. The time was truly here. A calming night, a holy night, the angel of the Lord said to the shepherds, do not fear. Scared shepherds were restored. A singing night, a holy night, angels' voices so strong. Anthems from heaven came to earth, sharing a joyful song. Exciting night, a holy night. The shepherds ran so fast to find the baby boy, a king. Their Lord is born at last. A promised night, a holy night, God's presence to the earth. A birth announcement for a king proclaimed our Savior's birth. An awesome night, a holy night. He came to set us free. He died upon the wooden cross, his death, our victory. With that, Lord, we just want to thank you so much for this historic true, wonderful story about your birth. Jesus, you came that we might have life. You lived 
that we might live. You died that we might live. And we are so thankful, Lord, for your grace and for your goodness. And so we invite you now, Lord, to be glorified in this gathering. This is a tender and precious time of the year where we gather in celebration of your birth, Jesus. And so as we gather in celebration of your birth, we invite you into our presence, into this building, into our hearts, Lord. We invite you, and we are so thankful, so thankful for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. We titled this message, The Wonder of the Greatest Gift. And we've actually been teaching on this series for the whole month of December. And so we kind of wrap things up tonight. The Wonder of the Greatest Gift. Christmas is expressed through gift giving because Jesus, who is the reason for this amazing annual and global celebration, was the greatest gift to the world. And this greatest gift, he, boy, he offers salvation and peace and a changed life. Jesus offers salvation, peace, and a changed life. As we read in Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20, the story kind of unfolds for us. It's a very familiar story, and I pray that as you hear the story again this year, that you would be refreshed in the truth of what we're talking about tonight, that you would be reminded of the great plan of God for your life, the great plan of God for this world. He so loves you, so desires to know you and that you might know him. Luke chapter two, verse one says, in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Verse 8, and in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, fear not, for behold, I bring you Good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The wonder of the greatest gift. Number one, Jesus, the greatest gift means salvation to all who believe. Jesus was born He lived and he died that we might have salvation. He was resurrected from the dead that we might have salvation. Jesus, the greatest gift means salvation to all who believe. As a child, I remember drowning, at least, almost drowning at least two times. I didn't actually drown, but I almost drowned actually at least two times that I can remember. I remember always getting into trouble in the water. I remember one time I was in the deep end of the pool and my brother, who's 15 months older and here tonight, he rescued me out of of that deep water and brought me safely to the edge of the pool. And then there was another time I was somehow sucked out into the the surf, out into the uh, Pacific Ocean down in Southern California. And I was held on to some pilings from the pier, and I was bobbing up and down. The water was going up over my head, and every time the water would go up, I would try to hold my breath, but inevitably I would suck in all kinds of water. And then when the water went down, I would try to scream, help! (laughs) And this just kept happening, and this kept happening until finally this lifeguard paddled out and put me on the board and rescued me and brought me in to safety. Listen, when you know (laughs) you've got no hope, to save yourself. You are filled with gratitude when someone comes to your aid. And this is exactly what Jesus has done. Jesus, who was called the sinless one, he rescued sinners. 
the Bible tells us that all have sinned. <laughs> all have had made mistakes and all have grieved God. And the Bible says that the penalty for that sin is death. It's actually spiritual death, which is eternal separation from God and all of his goodness. The Bible tells us that everything that is good actually comes from God. All that is good in the world, everything that is good in the earth and the things that we experience as human beings, everything that is good actually comes from God. The very life that we experience is a gift from God. The very light in the earth, in the atmosphere is actually a gift from God. Joy that we experience in this earth is actually a gift from God. Health, good health is actually a gift from God. So imagine Imagine an existence without those gifts, those very good gifts that are from God. Your existence would be darkness. Why? Because God is the giver of light. And so absent from God and absent from his gifts is total darkness, lacking any kind of joy and lacking any kind of physical health. The Bible describes this existence as a place of eternal fiery torment where there is only darkness and weeping and gnashing of teeth. This sounds terrible, and it is. <laughs> this is the reality, except the reason that we celebrate today. Jesus, this is our reality, except Jesus. He has the power to rescue us. Just like those who rescued me from certain death through drowning, God makes sure we have the option to be rescued from our certain death. God sent his son, Jesus, to die in our place. In John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. That is the good news. That is what we celebrate every Christmas on December 24th and 25th. The sending of the son is precisely what we celebrate and why we celebrate every year at Christmas. Let's continue to read the Christmas story in Luke chapter 2, verse 12. It says this. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Now this is a gender reveal party. Right? This is a gender reveal party above every other gender reveal party. When an angel and a multitude of heavenly hosts arrive and begin to celebrate the arrival of a child, you know it's a big deal. You know it's a very big deal. My niece actually had a gender reveal party today. And because of the holiday, I wasn't able to be there, but I was able to get the information just a few days ahead of time. I don't know if she knew that, but Michaela and Cody are having a baby girl. Congratulations to you. Are they here? Are they here somewhere? Congra oh, there they are. Congratulations. Congrats to you both. A new baby is a big deal. The birth of the Savior of the world is over the top and an incredibly big deal. The arrival of a baby is something most of us can relate to, something most of us have experienced on some personal level. We've all experienced something of the celebration, the excitement about, of, of the birth of a new baby. Jesus was born as every other baby is born. He was conceived in an altogether different way, but that's another sermon altogether. His birth was completely normal. As humans, we can relate to Jesus. And Jesus didn't arrive in a spaceship. He wasn't delivered by a stork. He wasn't in a form we struggle to connect with. Jesus was born as a human baby, God becoming man, fully human 
and yet fully God. He was fully man and fully God at the same time. The theological term for this miracle is called the incarnation. And the doctrine of the incarnation is taught or assumed throughout the Bible and comes to explicit statements in such passages as John 1.14 where it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is that Word. Jesus is the living Word of God, and He is God in the flesh. And Luke 2.14 says, Glory to God in the highest on earth. Peace among those with whom he is pleased. So number one, Jesus, the greatest gift means salvation to all who believe. Number two, Jesus, the greatest gift means peace to all who believe. Peace is a, it's a word that we can all relate to. We understand what the word means. We understand when we have it, and we certainly understand when we lack it. Peace means stability. Harmony, quiet, serenity, calm, order, confidence. That's what peace is. The blessing of peace is an incredible gift to us. We certainly know when peace is absent. Why? Because we're anxious. We're fearful and resentful, unsettled. We lack confidence. I wonder, are you experiencing peace in your life today. If not Jesus, if, if you're not experiencing peace in your life today, Jesus, well, he is the answer to your lack of peace. Welcoming Jesus into your life, welcoming his salvation brings peace. Wel welcoming his leadership brings peace into your life. And we'll tell you how to do that here in just a few minutes. Luke 2, 14 again says, glory to God. In the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. So how do we, how do we please God? <laughs> we please God by accepting his free gift of salvation. When we accept this free gift of salvation, the result is peace from God. Listen, if I knew you had a financial need and I gave you $100, imagine the peace around the provision for that financial need. We've all had financial need in our lives, and when that need is met, there's like a settling, like, okay, I can take a deep breath and relax. We can all relate to that need being met. Imagine a deeper need, an eternal need that is met when Jesus offers to meet our need for salvation our need for peace, and when he comes into our lives and meets that need, there's a great deal of peace. And the peace is not just temporary, it is eternal, because the Prince of Peace, Jesus the Lord, has actually come to live within us. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, stays with us. Not that we sometimes fret and sometimes doubt and sometimes worry, but we can always know that the peace of God is available to us when we turn our attention to him. So how do we please God? We please God by just welcoming his gift, his free gift. Again, if I offered that money, that financial gift, because I knew that you had a financial need and you didn't receive it, I would be perplexed. Like, why wouldn't they receive it. I'm offering to lift the load. I'm offering to help with this need. I would be perplexed if you didn't receive it. So God, in the same way, has offered his gift. And we please him when we decide to receive it and accept this free gift. He's perplexed when we don't. He wonders why we would resist, but he is pleased when we say yes to that incredible gift. So imagine that peace, the eternal peace you would experiencing at receiving, that you would experience by receiving his gift. Maybe you're wondering today, how? Okay, well then, how? I'd like to receive the gift. How do I receive the gift? Well, we accept, we re accept the gift of salvation by acknowledging our need for this gift. Just like someone who says, hey, I've got a need for a hundred bucks to help with this financial uh, expenditure. When we acknowledge we have a need and then receive the help 
we received what God has for us. So we say something like this, God, I have a need. <laughs> I need your salvation. God, thank you for giving me this gift of salvation. I welcome you into my life. When Jesus lived his earthly life, he called people to follow him. He said, come, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. And so these men and these women, they, they would drop their nets, and they would go and follow Jesus. He is still calling people even now. Nothing has changed from then to now. The call is the same. He's saying, come and follow me. Come and let me lead your life. Come and I will give you salvation. And that salvation will result in an amazing peace. So he's still calling people even now. And those who follow Jesus experience salvation and peace. And they also experienced a completely new life. This is what Jesus is offering you. His salvation, his peace, new life in him. Let's continue in Luke chapter 2 as we wrap up. Luke chapter 2 verse 15 says this, when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They couldn't get to Jesus quick enough. They had heard the announcement and they had to get to Jesus and they went with haste. Verse 16, they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen and had been given and had been told to them. So number one, Jesus, the greatest gift means salvation. Salvation to all who believe. Number two, Jesus, the greatest gift means peace to all who believe. And number three, Jesus, the greatest gift means a changed life to all who believe. Think about the scenario. Mary's life was forever changed at the birth of Christ. Joseph's life was forever changed at the birth of Christ. The shepherds, their lives were forever changed at the birth of Christ. I wonder, has your life been forever changed because of the birth of Christ? I would just encourage you tonight, this afternoon, to allow your life to be changed to allow your life to be transformed because of the birth of Christ. Believe who he says he is. Believe what he came to do. He came to offer you salvation and peace. And the result of salvation is peace, and the result of salvation and peace is Boy, it's a changed life. We just live differently. We see things differently through a different lens with better understanding, with greater clarity. Everybody that Jesus encountered had a completely changed life. Either they rejected him or they accepted him. Where are you tonight? Are you accepting his gift of salvation tonight? Or are you rejecting that? Are you rejecting his gift of peace tonight? Or are you rejecting that? Are you accepting his gift of a changed life? Or are you rejecting that. I just want to encourage you to open up your hearts and open up your minds and open up your arms and say yes to Jesus. Welcome him in. Your life will never be better. Your life will never be the same. I'd like to take a moment and just close our eyes and pray, and then I'd like to lead you in a prayer if you'd like to pray to accept the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So with everybody's eyes closed, Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity to lead people in the very thing that I did so many years ago. I chose to believe. I chose salvation. And the result of that salvation was peace. And the result of those things was a changed life. Thank you for that, Lord. My life will never be the same. It's altered forever for all eternity in a profoundly good and powerful way, Lord. And so I pray that for those who are here today who 
haven't opened their hearts to you, Jesus. I pray that they would do that now. So if you're here today and just in the quietness of your hearts, just say, Jesus, I have a need. And I know that you can meet that need. I, I believe that I'm a sinner. I believe that I need your grace. I believe that I need your life. I believe that you were born, that it's a historic fact, that you lived, that you died, and that you were resurrected. I believe that, Lord, and I invite you into my life. And like the disciples, the followers of yours in the first century, I, I want to follow you, so Lord, would you lead me? So God, I welcome your salvation, and with that, your peace, and with that, a new life. I want to follow you all the days of my life. Thank you for your grace and your goodness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.